let us talk about what this rejection of the truth really means. When unbelievers in the body of Christ do not accept every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, there is no way for them to perform all that the scriptures demand of them. Jesus said, the works he did, we would do also. But this saying was based on our belief. Without belief, it is impossible to walk as he walked or to do as he did. But are we comfortable with that? If we do not walk as he walked on this earth, we will not make it into his eternal kingdom. But it seems this too is another area of unbelief. We know in theory, we know in conviction that if we don't walk this word, if we don't walk this word, that we will not make it. We know it in the back of our heads. But in our everyday decision making, in our situations and circumstances, in our thoughts, we believe that we will get by with letting things slide. We believe that God sees all, but maybe this one he just gonna let slide. Or because we've done so much, you know, some of us have done some things in the kingdom. God has used us. So we believe that those things hold more weight than not walking in the earth as he did. And it says, it says here, if we do not walk as he walked on the earth, we will not make it into his eternal kingdom. Jesus walked as an example for us, and he's the one who made it back to the Father. So if we want to make it back, we have to walk as he did and do as he did. And he already told us that we're going to do greater works. But those works will not come if we don't walk as he walked. Those works can't come just by verbal, verbal talk. Just because I can put my words together nicely. Just because I can quote scripture from Genesis to Revelations. Just because I can, you know, I can be in a conversation and I can out preach you and you a preacher. But if we don't walk as Christ walked, literally, literally, we will not make it into his eternal kingdom. But a closer look at these unbelievers reveals some interesting facts confirmed by the word of God. The motivation for living in someone's past is the bitterness of offense. But these people are quick to say they have nothing in their hearts against anyone. Quick. But the Holy Ghost is a discerner of the hearts, and he knows that is not the truth. Have you ever entertained someone, and you know they're offended, even if it's not with you? They're offended for whatever the reason is. But if you ask them, oh, no, I'm good. Who, me? Oh, I don't get offended. No, I'm good. But deep down in their hearts, even while they're saying it, they feel the flutter. Some of this have been us. We've said, oh, I'm not offended. And we can feel the flutter. We can feel the, the tension in our hearts as we say that we're not offended. And everyone has their reasons as to why. I, didn't, I don't feel like, you know, some may say, well, I just said that because I I." Didn't feel like talking about it. Some may say, I said that because, you know, 
I'm really not, I'm okay, or I'll be okay. But we begin to believe that we're okay when we're not. Because we disguise it. We begin to believe that we're not offended when in our hearts we feel the tugging and the conviction that God has put there to remind us not to stay offended, not to stay upset. And sometimes people don't like to use the word offended because it sounds so like, but angry, bitter, uneased, you know, not settled about a thing. Whatever it is that doesn't allow love to freely flow. Feel some type of way. <laughs> yeah. But God will be faithful to show you that you feel a way and you will still reject that truth to cover it because you don't want to deal. But God said today we got to stop rejecting all truths. All truths. Not just when it come across the pulpit, but when it's looking you dead in the face through the form of a person. When it's looking you dead in the face, especially through a person that you don't want to listen to. I have to just put that out there because sometimes we'll accept truth if it's by someone that we want, that we good with. Oh, I'm cool with, with her. So I can, okay, I can hear what she's saying. I know that's coming from love. But God can come over here and let him give me the same truth. But because of how I view him, I can't accept it. I'm going to reject the truth. The truth that God sent. we looking at a person, but this, it's the truth that God sent. Rejecting the truth. In scripture, God never specified who he was going to use in your life. He used whoever he will. He used whoever he will. And sometimes it's your children. Let me just speak for me. But then too, there is the matter of not that which goeth into the mouth defile the man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defile the man. That's Matthew 15 and 11. It is quite easy for evil thinking and gross insults to process out of their mouths, but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanliness and despised government. Presumptions are they self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of digni dignities. That's 2 Peter 2 and 10. To embrace Christ is to embrace everything he taught. To embrace his te teachings is to deny self. To embrace the word of God. In order to truly embrace the word of God, you have to deny yourself. In order to embrace the truth, you must deny yourself. Nevertheless, to reject any of his teachings is to embrace selfishness. So when we, in, when we reject the truth, no matter who it comes through, we are operating in selfishness. We don't like to be called selfish. That's like a... Um, Fighting word, they say sometimes. But anytime we reject truth, the teachings of God, the way of God, the heart and mind of God, we're selfish. And I don't know nobody selfish getting into the kingdom. I, I, don't, I didn't see that on the narrow path. I didn't see that on the road to, on the road to um, eternity. 
I didn't see any selfish. Jesus was not selfish in none of his ways. And if we are as he is, which we are, if we're born again, we ought to not be selfish or allow any form of selfishness to creep in the midst of us. Nevertheless, to reject any of his teachings is to embrace selfishness, pride, and arrogance. These unbelievers are blind to the operation of the spirit. They do not walk in the spirit and deny the fact that others do. When we are not pure in heart, everybody doing wrong. Everybody else got a problem. We, we point the finger real good. Forgetting, how they say, forgetting the three that's pointing back at us. We, we point the finger real good when we have bitterness and arrogance. can't even see God in anybody. But it don't mean he's not there. It don't mean just because you can't see him because you offended, it doesn't mean that God ain't operating. It doesn't mean that the Holy Ghost not having his way because you can't feel him. God wants our hearts to be pure. He wants our hearts to be pure so that we can see God. But we cannot see God when our hearts are filled with bitterness, unforgiveness, pride, arrogance. Some of us God want to use and have purpose for us but can't because of our arrogance. Can't do it. Because then people would be confused by what they see. Can't use us because we selfish and it has to be our way. Wants to use us. Wants to manifest himself in our territory sphere of influence, but can't Can we humble our hearts to the truth this morning? Can we forget about me and just hear God this morning about truth and about rejecting his truth? Can we go a little further than the surface and examine our true hearts concerning our life and God? Because I don't want us to just hear this and say this, this was a good word. No, God, God is preparing us for the seven trumpet judgments. He's preparing his, his people because he is coming back for a church without spot or blemish. He is coming back for a church that has embraced his word and walked in his truths. He's not coming back for those that want us to uh, pass. So can we embrace the truth this morning? I do not know anyone who walks in the spirit in their boast. I don't know anybody who, let me just break that down. When you start hearing someone say, oh, I did, I did this. Oh, and and God used me for this. And I You know, this happened because I was there. You ain't walking in the spirit. That, no, no. You never hear Jesus bragged about what Jesus worked. Miracles. Miracles. And you never heard him saying, oh, I, Jesus did that. Oh, that was me, Jesus. Oh, because I walked by. That man was healed. Did you see? Jesus never So when you find yourself boasting, you need to ask, did God use you for real? And are you truly walking in the spirit of Jesus Christ? Because my Lord was humble in all of his ways. 
even while being the Messiah, even while being the Savior, even while raising people from the dead, he was humble about it. Never did he boast. And every time he had the chance, he said, it is not I. There's nothing good about me. I'm, un I'm unaware. He never, he always pointed it back to the Father. And when we find out when God used us, we got to give God the glory. We have to exalt God about it. We have to lift up his name because it is his name that has the power. And if he didn't live on the inside of us, we couldn't operate in the power. We couldn't work miracles and do things. We couldn't do all that God has for us in the spirit if we did not have the Holy Ghost. Can't do it. So never take God's glory. Never. It is not us, but it is he. We're alive because he liveth in us. Amen? Hallelujah. And they are right. They don't. They are blind and cannot discern the spiritual disposition of the people of God who have overcome the world and are indeed walking in the mind of Christ. They themselves reject that mind, so it is impossible for them to think as Christ would think to love as he would love, or to feel as he would feel about any given situation. They are easily offended and often look for an opportunity to, to drag those who are, spiritually into, who are spiritual into ungodly confrontations or to provoke negative character. To be successful at such tactics, give further justification for their own carnality. My Lord, these people are bitter because they can feel the fact that they are being judged by the word of God. But they cannot fight with him, so they take it out on those who truly seek to please him without reservation. But time is running out for disobedience. This is where I want to go. The days of the rebellious saints are shortened. Children of God, the day for rebelliousness is shortened. Time is running out for disobedience. Some of us have been saved for 20, 15, 10, 5 years. And when we look in our lives, we still see rebelliousness. We still see where we have not given God all that he wanted. We still fall in some of the same categories, struggling with some of the same sins, and have not embraced that we are overcomers. We've not overcome our trials. But God said our days are shortened. He's not, he doesn't want the world to be confused anymore. He's bringing down those that will not be a true representation of Christ. He's bringing them down. He's, he's not even giving them platforms. He's not, he's not giving them an audience. And the people that rally with them, as our apostle said, that Satan has a congregation, darkness has a congregation, so just because you have a crowd listening, don't mean it's of God. Just because you have a rally or a following, doesn't mean that it's of God. If it's not producing Christ, 
It's not of God. Not of God. There is no need for them to continue to encumber the ground, seeing as how they always deny him. The glorification, the Holy Ghost was sent to give the Father. They see themselves as just, sometimes even more righteous than those who do walk in the Spirit. Most of the time, that is due to them living in the overcomer's past. You can't see past people moved on in God, but you still can't see it because of your self-righteousness. They hold fast to the overcomer's past mistakes or sin, and they never allow themselves to forget. And that is their excuse for not trusting in leadership. My Lord, they have become spotted and blemished in the household of faith. And they truly have no wisdom because their pride has deceived them. So what is left? Where does one go from here? Because we have to move from here. The truth is you can try to walk in parallelism. Unbelievers in the body of Christ walk parallel to the truth. How? They come to church consistently enough to stay abreast of what is being taught though they sift the word and make void the consciousness of such behavior, they embrace enough truth to be able to feel comfortable against the saints. I'm gonna share this before we do the rejection. Jordan is the, uh, the one rejecting truth and Trey is the one embracing truth, right? And so, Either one of two things will happen with our decision today. Come come down here, guys. Either one of two things will happen. We'll either embrace the truth or we will walk parallel to the truth in hopes that it will get us back to the Father. Right, come right here. Jordan is the one not embracing truth. Trey is the one embracing truth. And Gigi used this illustration too, I believe. In church, we praising the Lord. Now, this is the, this is the one walking in the spirit. But he going to follow. Still have bitterness in his heart. Not ready to forgive the ones that he has seen um, walk in unrighteousness. Still holding people to their past. But he, he, they say lift your hands or it's worship time. He going to worship. Praise them. This one, this one comes to the altar because they say they need help with um, people to pray for sinners. He going to come to the altar. Yes. Now he want to help pray for people. But Trey is on his way. I guess I still need you, Brother T, because you can be God. Trey on his way to eternity. He on his way to see his master. And his master looking sharp. Brother T is God. Hello, God. <laughs> Trey on his way. Scoot up. Scoot that way a little bit. Trey on his way to God. Take one step. Trey on his way to God. But his end is eternity to reign with the Father. He has an expected end because he is obeying God's word. He is not rejecting the truth. Even if it come and buffet him, it can, it can beat him down. It can, he has to say ouch through some messages. He has to go humble himself to Jesse because he was wrong. Then he got to come over here to um, Pastor Landy because he was wrong with her. But he's willing because his eye is set on God. But Jordan can't, can't find it in himself to humble his heart. He can go to Jesse because he all right. But he said, I can't go to Pastor Landy. I can't do it because she wronged me first. But when, he, but when, when Trey take a step, he feel like he can take a step. 
and they look like they're the same. They both look like they're in the spirit. They're both singing with an anointing, dancing with an anointing. They're both ministering into the lives of people because they hear the truth and they know how to articulate the truth. But only one is walking in the truth. And see, that's why this walk is personal, because we can fool people any day. But he know that when he get there, if he don't correct that flutter in his heart, his expected end is not the same as his. See, we, this walk is personal for us. This, we got to make this a per, we have to no longer care about how people see us. We have to no longer care about clout and titles. We have to make sure that we are walking in what God has said for us to do. I can't walk for you, but I can do what God tell me to do. I can't go where she go, but I can go where God tell me to go. But if my, if my eye ain't set on God, it's because it's set on him. And I just want to do what Trey doing. Trey look like he being used by God. I want to be used by God. So Trey take another step. Jordan take another step. But God is only pleased with himself. He's only pleased with himself. And until, because just, just the same example with Sam, God, he can come, God can come, embrace him. God can come because he's trying to get us to embrace truth. But until Jordan does this, push, push against him. And stop doing that. Stop pushing up against truth. And God, keep trying to give them truth. Keep trying to embrace them. Until Jordan stop rejecting truth and embrace it, he'll never have an expected end. He'll never have an expected end. He'll never be able to fully be used by God. He'll never experience the fullness of the Holy Ghost. He'll never be able to walk in the the statue of the man Jesus Christ he will never ever embrace holiness and righteousness and feel the purity of God and feel the power of God because he keep trying to be a mimic but God didn't create us to be a mimic God didn't send his son to die on the cross for a mimic he told us that we will be as he is We are as he is. And he's not a parallel to God. He said, I am God in flesh. And we are God in flesh. We are Christ in flesh. And we are to walk as such. But we can't walk if we keep rejecting the word and the truth that God bring before us. You are a son of God. You are not a sinner. You are not a mimic. But you are a sinner son of God and you are one with the father and just like God spoke and had purpose for Jesus he had purpose for you he has purpose for you but we must embrace truth don't look at truth as as an offense truth hurts sometimes but it's love it'll make you better Hallelujah. It'll help you along the way. If you can just hold fast to the truth, the word, the pure word, the truth that come forth. Stop going by these things that how we fit. We want to feel good and we want to quicken. No. Let's walk in the truth of God. God says some of us are here today, but we need to embrace truth for your life what is your truth what is God saying to you what is your truth pertaining to your life and godliness your life and where God is calling you don't hold back from God 
He has an expected end for us. And he said, truth is sufficient. It's enough to carry us until he comes back for us. It's enough to keep us in perfect peace. We must embrace God's word. We must. And we all hear him. We know what he's saying to us. You know what he's whispering to you. You know what he's telling you to do. I don't have to come up here and say, God want you to do one, two, three. You know, because he speaks to us. He doesn't leave us to ourselves. He doesn't leave us to figure it out. He tells us exactly what he wants us to do. He's showing us exactly what he wants us to do. But we must embrace. Because we can preach. Thank y'all. We can preach this whole book from beginning to end. This part three. We can preach one, two, three, and Doc say there's a four coming. But if we're never going to fully embrace it, never, if we're not going to walk in three, why are we looking for four? Come on. If we're not going to ever walk in this word, there's a place for us. There's a place for the unbeliever. And there's a special place for those that have known the truth. We've known this truth. I don't care where the crowd going. Honey, if they ain't going where the truth at, you better not follow them. You better not follow them. I don't care who calling you in this corner. If that corner ain't truth, you better not follow them. Because there's a place for those of us who have heard this truth and will not walk in it. Give the word.